What 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 went wrong for you growing up? Do you think? You hang around with some some people that you shouldn't, and you get into situations that you wish you you, you never got into. I've been arrested for murder. I found myself abusing, and on the bad side of drugs and alcohol. I met my partner, and she helped Carol. change Coral. She helped change my life. Discipline. It comes through love as well. Mm, beautiful it's, way of putting it. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a mad thing that love. You need to to see the happiness and to see the ending, um, and to, to suck that out of love. I need love that keeps me going really, and it's my love for my partner and and for boxing. This is Fight Club. Come on in. Welcome to Fight Club. It's episode 11 here via Boxing Social. I'm Gareth A. Davis. In the studio with me today, Johnny Fisher, the young prospect who is a roaring heavyweight in boxing and also a man who is inspiring many people, the super featherweight, Kane Baker. Frank Warren joins me. Don Charles joins me. All that coming up. Welcome to Fight Club. Uh, I've got the two men in the studio, the main men today, Johnny Fisher, Kane Baker, both fresh off fights let's talk to you first johnny yep. um you've been in dublin you fought a couple of weeks ago you got your hand hold your hand hand up for us what's happened there so basically there's a little thing ongoing thing nothing major just um my tendons and there's things called sagittal bands which hold your tendons sagittal bands, bands. So i've never heard that word so they're like before. scaffolding that hold your tendons into place right right and obviously the repetition you're not meant to we're not meant to punch with our fists are we? it's just not humanly it's not what we're made designed to do. So it's just damage over time. It's just about managing it. And I've got a few weeks off now. So the doctor said, just rest it, splint it up, completely rest the tendon, immobilize it. And uh, longevity wise, that will, that will help you in the long run. Were those big punches on Harry Armstrong that yeah. did it? It's not just uh, on Harry Armstrong, but in the whole training camps, the sparring, the bag work, the pads, it all accumulates over time. And it's just about managing the workload. You can have a surgery to correct it, but I don't want to have a surgery. It's just, that's long, a long-term thing. I want to just maintain it bit by bit and uh, that would be better for me. A quick one, how did it feel at the O2? You got an amazing reception, yeah. an incredible knockout. I don't think it should have gone on when he no. fell into the ropes, by the way, but that's not going to stop you. Defend yourself at all times. Um, amazing, amazing atmosphere in there. Obviously being on the Joshua Carb was great. Um, what a tough man Harry Armstrong was. I had him down in the first 10 seconds and um, I knew I had to pace myself because it's a 10 round fight. If I had to go to points, he had to go to points, but I'm glad I showed I got the power late on as well. And yeah, I probably knocked him down in the fourth round as well. The ref didn't give it, I don't I don't know why. And then finished him off in the seventh. So credit to Armstrong as well. You've clearly watched it back. Yeah, I watched it back a few times. It's been, it's, it just felt amazing. You know, like you put all that work in and it wasn't just this camp, it's the camps before and you're building up and there's all this, anticipation and for me winning the southern area title just gave me a, yeah. a little bit of legitimacy like i'm not just a gimmick i can compete at a certain level bosh bosh and um <laughs> harry armstrong's going into that fight it had a seven eight week camp yeah. in the mountains with the wire big the, strong man granada it's been around the blocks by yeah. joyce chisora great amateur career really thought he was going to win this fight and had the superior boxing skills but i showed otherwise kane welcome to the show obviously uh, Johnny's uh, a friend of all my shows. He's become a friend of all my shows. I've been for the Chinese. Yes. Hopefully at some point today yes. he'll invite you yes. for a Chinese yes. with the family. Uh, um, um, you fought Jordan Flynn at the weekend. It was a draw. Yeah. Um, you've got your scars. I've got the old Ed Butt scars. You got Is that cuts on both eyes? Cuts on both eyes. Cuts on both eyes the fight before as well. Over 20-odd stitches in the two fights. Yeah. Unbelievable. You, you, um, when you were coming on today and we put it out there on Boxing Social, um, do you know that there's a lot of love and admiration for you out there? Uh, I'd, yeah, I, re I have received a lot of love, um, a lot of love, a lot of questions and ways I can relate to people from my lifestyle and the life I've lived. Um, 
Yeah, a lot of love out there. Is it amazing that you're alive sometimes, do you think? Yeah, 100%. Could you have gone? Yeah, 100%. I've been in some, um, some sticky, some real rough situations as well through my life. Um, yeah, things could have gone a different way if it weren't for my partner in boxing. Um, but instead I'm here to tell the tale and smile and, and keep boxing, yeah. What 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 went wrong for you growing up, do you think? Um, I don't know if it was growing up or when I grew up and put myself in some, in some bad situations and you, you hang around with some some people that you shouldn't and you get into situations that you wish you, you, you never got into. Uh, and I found myself in some real, real pickles. Uh, yeah, I've been, been some bad, bad places in my life. Uh, Why? I've been, ar- been arrested for murder. Um, I found myself abusing and on the bad side of drugs and alcohol. Um, some some real sticky situations that I've been in uh, homeless. Some yeah, sometimes do you know even if you're talking about it and thinking about it, uh, sometimes and sometimes I could I might not have been here if things would have gone the different way. Um, but I am. I met my partner and she helped Carol. change Coral. Yeah, she helped change my life. Boxing's played a massive massive part in fully transforming my life around. Uh, I think love has as well. Yeah, love. The dis- discipline that comes through love as well. Mm, beautiful it's, way of putting it, yeah. It's, it's, it's a mad thing that love, you need to, to see the happiness and to see the ending. But there's a part of love that's, that involves discipline. Um, and to, to suck that out of love, and it, love that keeps me going, really, and it's my love for my partner and... And for boxing, uh, yeah, for for how well I've done, I've improved my life and my situations. I mean, you're a super featherweight boxer now. Yeah, I think you were about three and a half stone heavier at one point, maybe four stone heavier, maybe close to five. Five stone heavier, five stone heavier. Yeah. Um, I know that you you've worked in a bank before, so you, it's not like you weren't responsible. You worked in the bank as a clerk. Yeah. You were 19, I think. Yeah, well, I, I think I started at 70. I was clean. I started in the bank cleaning. I got kicked out of school um, and I went, my mum was a, had a cleaning contract and she sent me there as a cleaner. I cleaned out the... I used to clean the coffee bins out and uh, I got speaking to some of the managers and he said, I can maybe get you in and uh, I wangled my way into the bank. That yeah. was your first lifeline into things working. Yeah. Um, and like I said, I got, I got arrested for a charge I didn't commit. But right. um, so my my job come crashing down. I lost my job, my savings. I'd saved to buy a house and went with that. And I, I fell into some bad bad situations. And um, alcohol and drugs took took over really. And I, was that numbing the pain? Is yes, that what it, one one hundred percent numbing? Where does the pain come from? Um. From being in bad situations and and seeing things, I've seen a lot of stuff growing up. My my mum brought me up one hundred percent to the best of her ability, and she she worked. We had no no father role, no nothing like that. But she she used to work three jobs, so we had somewhere to live. Um, and when you when when your mum does that, she don't get to see kind of what happens. And I kept a lot from my mum, some of the stuff. I got up to. Um, she's probably a great person, isn't she? Oh, she's great. She's, yeah. she's biggest great. fan. Biggest fan, one hundred percent. Biggest love. Um, but like I said, she was working three jobs to. So we had a roof over our head, um, and she didn't see a lot of the stuff I got up to. And I'd be embarrassed to tell her some of the stuff I got up to, but she heard a lot of things I got. The murder and the police kicking the door and the the house getting trashed. My mum had to move was move away for her own safety. Some of the stuff we got, I got involved in. Um, yeah, uh, and I'm always in for in debt for my mum for what she's done for me and how hard she worked and and what she taught me in morals and things. Because uh, I I did lead a bad way of life, but uh, my morals were never bad. I never set out to ever hurt. I think anyone. that's clear in the way you are as a person, anyway. 
I never set I think out. It shines anyway. through, doesn't it, Johnny? It does, hundred percent. You can tell you wouldn't be here now if it if it didn't. Mm. Good people know good people, don't they? Your story's a little bit different, but again, mum is the rock for your dad, Charlotte yep. for Big John. Yes. But you know this story yeah, because it's a story that I think it's very inspiring and it's a story of Arturo Gatti or um, Johnny Tapia, kind of lunatics really. <laughs> I'm not calling you a lunatic. Yeah, yeah. I think maybe we're all lunatics, but we are, but but, yeah, but it's 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 honing that lunacy into something that is rigid, forward thinking, and in the end, beautiful. Yes. It's beautiful yes. to hear you tell that story, and here you are now, looking phenomenal shape, cuts on your eyes, more fans than you had before. I want to say, is it eleven wins, ten losses? Is it eleven wins, ten? No. Oh. 20 wins. 19 wins. 19 wins, 10 losses. 10 losses, Come 2 on. draws. So apologies. <laughs> apologies. My point is, for some people, it's the undefeated record. Yeah. But when your story is strong enough that people want to follow your life, yeah. no matter how many loses, how many losses no. you have, because you've already suffered more than 10 losses in your life in other ways and come back. Yes, That's yes. True. You, we can uh, um, when you've had losses like that, some of the losses I get now are, are still winning. I'm yeah, still exactly. winning. Exactly. Um, and Peter, you're not always the house fighter either. Never. I, don't, <laughs> I, I, I am sometimes, but I don't. I like to be the away fighter. He's definitely. Old, he's an old school fighter. Just turn up, do the job. Yeah. That's the the, the only thing I haven't done yet. He's been in the crowd. I do take, when I go watching shows or go and watch Johnny. I always take my gum shield. Just in case they call you out of the crowd, if yeah. anyone. What that that late to be the glue? Oh on the yeah, show. that that would that is my dream. That is my dream. So every show, the opponents I go to, dropped I out. Suppose yeah. You're in the second row. Yeah. Suppose anyone, way, anyone, anyone sitting there, I'm yeah. there with Coral Gumshield. The, <laughs> like, the pressure's completely off then, isn't it? As well, yeah. like if you have a fight like that, and like you're just coming in from the crowd. What have you got to lose? Like that's a great that'd be a great feeling. Just going. That's in, old school. Bonus. I, I, I mean? did. Um, I was working the one day. Uh, <laughs> And I ended up flying 24 hours notice, flying to Belfast and uh, fighting Gary, Gary Cully on 24 yeah. hours notice. Yeah, He's an old school boy as well. Yeah. yeah I like Gary Cully. Yeah. Like um, great fighter. Great lad. Great lad. Yeah. Um, yeah, but 24 hours notice. I've had a couple of days, a week. Um, yeah, it's the buzz. What's mum's name? Lynn. Will she watch this? Yeah, she watches everything. I <laughs> What's your message then? Age 33. 31 fights in? Yeah. What's your message to mum after all these years, if she's watching now? Um, I don't want you to be too emotional now, but no. what's your message to mum? My message to my mum is, um, mum, you, you taught me to always keep fighting, and um, I'm 33 now, I've had 31 fights, and uh, nothing's changed, I'm going to keep fighting, mum. And uh, that's something she taught me, work hard and always fight for things you believe in, and that. Uh, and that's something I, I will do for the rest of my life, and uh, and I'm, um, yeah, I've I've been brought by a lovely mother, and I can't thank her enough for the love she's given me. And I know how hard, and some of the hardship my mom went through, and I've watched her go through, and um, that's why our bond's unbreakable. Johnny's not in a relationship yet, it's like a married or can't, engaged. Can't get a second date, Gareth. Can't get a second date, <laughs> yeah. exactly. But I th I'd like to see you on first dates. That would be great yeah, fun. That would, that that would be good. Um, <laughs> Coral as well. Will Coral watch this? Yes, 100%. What's your message to Coral? Um, well, I tell her every day. She, um, she, she saved my life. She saved my life, hands down. Um, without a shadow of a doubt, she saved my life. How did you life. meet her? We we knew each other for kind of for years and for a friend of a friend, but um, I did just put it out there and put it on there and wooed her and told told her love at first sight for you. Oh yeah, one hundred percent. Every every day I look at her, I fall in love with her. She's um That's she's very this very very special special person, and not only is she the most beautiful person I've ever met, but it's, there's something. Sometimes when you look at beauty and you you can look through beauty and see the person's soul, 
and, and I know her soul, and it was it was made for me to be there. And uh, yeah, we uh, we live a lovely life together. I love this story that. I just say you were about 16 stone at the time, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And 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 Coral, who was very fit physically, yeah, yeah. Well, she's a beautiful looking woman, but she was fit physically. She said, "I'm going to get you in shape." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell us about that because she, she started uh, weighing your food and she, she <laughs> putting you on food. a regime. She literally as well. Her alar- alarm would go off and she would two feet me out of the bed, and she'd be like, "You've got to go running." <laughs> And I'd be, I remember sitting there. 3.48 a.m., I recall. You must yes. really love her. <laughs> I used to think to myself, what the hell? But, <laughs> but because she said it, I would have done anything she would have said. Do you know, I'd have ran yeah. barefooted if I had. But luckily, I was allowed to run in trainers. But um, yeah, I, I, and I did. I stuck to the her training machine. She's been my coach, really, my life coach. She's in the corner with you? Uh, no, but that's something we're looking at. We're looking at. Um, I got my coach's license and she was meant to come along, which is a bit unwell. So I'm going to look at badging her up, maybe. And uh, I mean, you're a handsome guy and you're fit and you've got all the tattoos now. I'm going to ask you about in a minute. But she loved you when you were 16 stone. I know. She I, must really love you now. <laughs> well, uh, this is what I say. So I, say I, I do say that. So I say, are you looking at him over there, that big guy over there? I, go, yeah. I, know, I know you. She might be looking at Big John. <laughs> yeah, Big John. <laughs> You can always put weight on for her later on. Come yes, on. definitely. She misses her. Um, <laughs> she wanted you to put weight on now. Would you put it on? She wouldn't ask me to. While I was, <laughs> while I, while I was boxing, she wouldn't. Ask, but sometimes, especially like the last week of uh, before I go to fight week, she'll go, bloody hell, where's your ass?" <laughs> <laughs> this isn't an episode of first dates, by the way, <laughs> even though it's a bit of a loving at the moment. Right, tattoos. You got any, Johnny? No, zero. Why? Just never had something meaningful that I need to put on. I think me and Sonny Cannon have made a pact. If I ever win a British title, we'll get Bosch on our. Oh, okay, win. nice. Yeah, that would be that would be the one. When, but when you win the British title, when when well, I like the positive. I'm I'm hundred percent going to get that tattoo as well for Johnny Bosch. Are you going to get a Bosch when he wins yeah, the British title? Yeah, go get a little one for me as well. Okay, <laughs> that'd be brilliant. Is that Bosch? Oh, Depends shit. how far you want to go, Gareth. But I'm happy go. with just the simple four letters. But <laughs> yeah. yeah, that that I feel like when you get a tattoo. It'd have to be something meaningful yeah. for me to do it, you know. It'd have to be something, but I, I, I can appreciate why people get them 100%. Absolutely. I've got one, and it was a meaningful moment, getting my body back in shape after a heart attack, yeah. losing 20 kilos. Um, and it was, I, I remember coming off paddle boarding one day. I was down in South End, yeah. and I went, I'm going to the tattoo artist now, what and I'm getting it? it now. It's um, the Eye of Horus, which is protection, a half completed circle, which is. The, the circumference of my life, which is not complete yet, yeah. yes. and a triangle and geomancy, which is my star signs are there, but my life isn't complete yet. So that, that it's, the journey it's a journey. It's yes. the journey. And I remember that day because weirdly, I mean, I did used to have a good body when I played sport years ago. Your rugby, player. rugby and cricket, yeah. martial arts. Yeah. And I, and I felt like I could take my shirt off again. Because yeah. I was too embarrassed <laughs> to take it off. I took my shirt off that day and that right, I'm getting the tattoo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's talk about your tattoos. Because there are, I don't know, 50 on your upper body? Yeah. Um, Do you know how many there are? No. No, they kind of merged. I call it one now. But, yeah, um, just they're, they're, all, yeah. they're just everywhere. I mean, th- th- there's a whole journey going on there. I think if we have a picture up, of your body there are like the upper body up to your neck we can see it slightly there can you pull out a few of them yeah what what are they um the different parts different parts of my life um are some of, of them at wild times as well oh yeah 100 percent. some of them are at wild times which is mad as it sounds and you think oh we must regret that then but they're not because I can sit down and I can go to the part and I can remember how I was feeling at that time, what was going on in my life at that time. So to me now, it's like a shirt full of medals because I've overcome some bad situations and my tattoos are some bad situations. Um, and the the last few I want to get now really are some good time. The only thing is they, I've realised now that the more that I've had, they really, really, really hurt. Ah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Where is that? What's one? your favourite one? One that you maybe look at the most that catches your eye? Um, the one of me in the in the corner 
on the uh, the box in, in the corner of the ring. Go on, just hold that up so that's... It says yeah. next to that, every risk is the chance. Yes. And it says there, police... Police oh. line do not cross, and there's alcohol, there's drugs. We've got the dice going on. The dice. We need a dice sponsor for Kane Baker, by the way. Yes. A betting sponsor. Big shout out to my sponsors, County Clean and Nitrous Competitions. It's all on this show. Great to have the boys in the studio. Frank Warren is up next. Welcome back to Fight Club here on Boxing Social. I'm Gareth A. Davis. Joining me now is Hall of Fame promoter Frank Warren. We can't see him today. All you're seeing is that beautiful photo of him. I want to say 30 years ago, but he does actually still look like that. Frank's actually getting physio while we're doing this. Are you getting all the parts pressed at the moment, Frank? Listen, mate, there's not a bit of my body that works anymore. <laughs> Um, look, let's get straight into it. A massive week coming up, a, a massive 10 weeks coming up, if you include the fight with Daniel Dubois and Alexander Usyk, Gili Zhang and Joe Joyce, and then your guy Tyson Fury against Francis Ngannou. What a heavyweight sequence that is. First of all, let, let, let's talk about Poland. I know you're headed there tomorrow as I am. Um, can Daniel Dubois upset the apple cart? Can he pull this off in, in Poland against Yusik in front of what we expect to be 43,000 of his Ukrainian fans? But he's going into the lion's den. We know that. Um, he had very limited experience as a senior amateur. He only had seven fights as a senior, whereas uh, we all know that Usyk uh, won... Uh, Olympic medals. Um, he also won the cruiserweight championship as, um, excuse me, as a um, as a professional, and he's undefeated as the heavyweight champion, beating our, our own um, Anthony Joshua. But I believe that Daniel Dubois is a much better fighter than people give him credit for. I believe he has the tools to win this fight. I think he's got youth on his side. He's got speed. He's certainly got power. He's got a superb jab. And it's all going to be about, at the end of the day, his mental fortitude. And I believe he's got mental strength to get him through this fight. And I think he can win it. What have you seen in him in the build-up to this one that does make you feel confident that, that he believes that he can do this, Frank? Because he had the opportunity to step aside and he didn't want to do that. And he's very, at this particular moment in time, you know, when I speak to him, when I've seen him, um, he's just been supremely confident. He's aware of what he's stepping into. Um, but as he says, and, and a lot, you know, a lot of good fighters say the same thing. When you, Once you're in the ring, you're in the ring. It's just the two, you, you two guys in there. And the best will win the fight. And it, it, he, he, just got, he just seemed to have this little bit of, I don't know what it is. A bit, well, I suppose the best word for it is confidence about him. You know, he feels that this is his fight. He feels that he's got the tools to win it. And I do. I genuinely believe he can. I mean, I've, I've been involved in lots and lots of world title fights over the years where my guys have been massive underdogs. And I probably think this is probably where, you know, the guy that I'm involved with, being Daniel, is the biggest underdog of all of them. But I do, genuinely do feel he can win this fight, and I'm, and I'm, I, 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 I am, you know, I, I, I just, I've got so much belief in him, and I think he's got the key to the door. And the reason is, I look at what he's done at what Usyk's done at heavyweight, and you know, he fought um, uh, Chad Witherspoon, who you know was a basically a journeyman when he moved up for his first fight to acclimatize at the weight. The second fight he had was against. Um, Derek Chisora, who gave him a tough fight for about eight rounds before he got beat. There was nothing in the fight. And I know and I know I'd have my money on out of Derek Chisora at that time and Daniel Dubois. Uh, they had spars, mm. and uh, Derek didn't want to fight Daniel. And then, obviously, he fought AJ twice. And for me, AJ, for since the uh, Ruiz fight, has not looked the same guy. 
Um, and so I think this is for Usyk will be his toughest fight. Do you think Daniel has got to establish himself very early in this fight and take it to Usyk and not allow him to get into a rhythm and find that momentum and that, that southpaw mm -hmm. majesty that he has at time and where he creates very good angles. Do you believe that Daniel should go out there and be very aggressive from the start? I don't think he can do what AJ did, which he did. He stood off him. He's got to use his physical his physical superior, superior, super, superiority mm. in as much as he's a bigger guy. He's got a longer longer reach. So he's got to use that jab. He's got to take command of the centre of the ring. And he's just got to throw punches. You know, real. he's very strong. And it doesn't matter to me where he hits him on, hits him on the arms, on the elbows, wherever. Let him feel the power. That's what he's got to do. He's got to show that you know how powerful he is, how strong he is, and he's got to bully him. You know, he's got to go in there. He wants the title. You want it, so go and get it. You got to go, and you got to just give, give everything to go and win this title. You got to go and be the boss. On Sunday morning, we're going to be talking about the undisputed title, whether it's Tyson Fury against Daniel Dubois if your guy is successful, or Tyson Fury against. Um, Alexander Usyk. Um, have you been watching At Home with the Furies, which is obviously number one series on Netflix right now? Yeah, I have. I have watched it. You know, it's, uh, it, 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 it shows it shows shows Tyson. It shows him at home with his family. I think it's very very entertaining, and it also shows you know shows glimpses of the dark places that Tyson can go to. No, it definitely does. It shows the complexity of the man and all that kind of noise around him that people don't understand the way he is. Um, you can't act that way that he is. There, there are these extraordinary mood shifts. I mean, it's been an incredibly successful series. Um, we start to talk now don't we, about, obviously we've got Joe Joyce and Julie Zhang, but we start the big build now towards Tyson Fury and Francis Ngannou. And the more I see it, the more I hear about it now, there have been posters out this week, these iconic cartoon-like posters. People are starting to warm to the fact that this is actually going to be a moment in time, a historic moment for the heavyweight division with the crossover of a UFC champion against um, a boxing heavyweight champion in Tyson Fury. Two massive men, two massive figures. It's actually, I actually feel it growing. The noise is not against it anymore. Well, I, I said from the beginning, Gareth, it's been the biggest event that I've ever been involved in. It's, it's going to be a, a huge, massive event. But it's not just about appealing to boxing fans. It appeals is to appeal to the general public. And as you just said, Tyson, as far as the general public's concerned, not the boxing public, the general public, has, has gone to number one in the net, in the, in Netflix films, which is a huge, huge achievement. His last two or three books have all got all become number one bestsellers. He has a bigger market than boxing. And this fight, which is which is the opening event on the prestigious uh, Riyadh season, I mean to be to be the opening event tells you what it's all about, and the faith that that uh, Saudi Arabia has in in making this the opening event mm. tells you tells you what it's all about. It's a unique fight between two guys from two different disciplines, the best of their disciplines, the WBC and lineal. Uh, heavyweight champion in Tyson and the UFC heavyweight champion in Nagano. You know, and, and, and I've got to take my hat off to Nagano because he wanted to do this under under boxing, under Marcus Queensbury rules. That's what he wants to do. So this is what we got, this massive event. And I look at it as a boxing person and I look at it, you know, and obviously favouring Tyson and, uh, and, and a big believer, as you know, in Tyson. And I think to myself, what can this guy do? How does he make this fight how does he win this fight, Nagano? Can he win it? And it seems to me, and I may be wrong, but I don't think I am. I can't see him outboxing Tyson. I just can't see him doing that. And you know he's a massive puncher. He's the hardest punching heavyweight um, in any sport. He's in the Guinness Book of Records for the for the for the the, you know, the biggest punch. So he needs to to win this fight. He needs to knock Tyson out. He needs to knock the fight out of Tyson. So you know, whilst this fight lasts, it's going to be exciting. 
because that's what it's going to be. It's a fight. And it, and and at the end of the day, I genuinely, genuinely believe we're going to see something that's going to be extremely, extremely exciting in this unique event. It's going to be televised worldwide. It's going to be massive box office, and it will be massive box office because it's a crossover event. Tell and me. Will, you know, and it, sorry. I was going to say, um, obviously, you're dealing with His Excellency, the... The, 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 the Minister for Sport and Entertainment who's running the, the Riyadh season. Um, tell me about dealing with the Saudi Arabians on this. They're very, very serious about sports entertainment and big, big boxing events. And maybe they are the guys that are going to make the undisputed title possible as well. Is that, is that right? Right. Well, it's not the Minister of Sport at all. It's the Minister of, it's the minister of Entertainment. His Excellency is the Minister of Entertainment. And they are massive believers in it, believers in this. And I, I believe, I believe we're in a position now where we, well, we'll be in a position if Daniel wins, and I believe Daniel will, will win on Saturday. He wins that fight, then it's not going to be very difficult to make the unification. But if it goes the other way, I still believe we're going to be in a position to make the unification. I think things have moved on in a very dramatic fashion. We are working with people who are absolutely up to up for making the fights that matter they're getting behind them you know uh, stellar who are part of this as well are are just a fantastic people to work work with every time we sit down with them all they are all everything is positive it's positive it's the ideas that they're throwing out i've been in the promotion business for many many years but I've got to tell you something, this is, this is something else. This is exciting. This is working with a group of people who want to make every event the best and biggest event. And it will be. This event is something extra, extra special involving, and it's a, it's a fact of life now, the most popular boxer on the pla planet in Tyson Fury. The most popular boxer on the planet. The most, probably the most popular sportsman on the planet now with his Netflix series. If you were projecting ahead, obviously we've got 10 weeks' time. We have Fury against Ngannou, as you rightly say, opening the Riyadh season. If you were to project ahead about the undisputed title, whether it be Daniel Dubois or Alexander Rusik against Tyson Fury, of course he's got to beat Francis Ngannou first. When would you perceive that happening? Is that the middle of next year? Is it early next year? Is it, when do you perceive in your mind, when would you like to see it happening? I'd, look, I'd like to see it happen yesterday. <laughs> but I, I, I generally believe we're in a position where if Tyson comes through and the winner of the fight on Saturday comes through, I think we may be in a position to get this away early next year. We will see. Everyone's working to make sure we deliver the biggest fights. That's what we're doing. We are a team that, that have, have got our blinkers on. We're looking forward. We're not looking behind us. We're looking forward. We're looking to learn the lessons from why fights haven't happened and make them happen. And we're in a unique position now that we're able to do this. And it's going to kick off on the 28th of October with a massive event opening the Riyadh season. Is that, can, you, can you define for us that His Excellency, the Minister of Entertainment, is interested in the undisputed fight going ahead as well under their auspices? <laughs> They're, he's a massive sports and boxing fan. Massive. Of course he is. And who's not interested in it? Mm. Of course he's interested in it. Him and, him and Dr. Farak, they're, 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 they're massively, massively interested in boxing. They like boxing. They're massive boxing fans, which is great for the sport. And it's great for, and at the end of the day, it's great for the, for, for the boxers because it gives them a great opportunity to, to generate some serious income. It's great for us as promoters and fans, because we're going to see great fights that we've been waiting for for a long time. They will happen. Do you think the, his the, 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 the near history, the next three, four, five years, is destined for that part of the world in boxing? Yeah, I just think it's like Vegas. You know, when Vegas, when Vegas, well, you think all the big fights took place in, in America took place in New York. Mm. Vegas came into being and all the big fights shifted there. We're seeing a dramatic uh, shift now again. And you can think over the years, I mean, the shift of the heavyweight division shifted over to these shores. 
It's been the UK for a long time now. You know, the list of British heavyweight champions. When I was growing up in the sport, you never never had a British heavyweight, world heavyweight champion. Now they, they're like buses. And we're in a situation now where, you know, the, the Saudi Arabia, not just in boxing, but in general, in, in all entertainment, and certainly, and, and as is the case now in boxing, they're making a commitment. And they want the best, and the only way you get the best is to is is to is to is basically to to work hard and give it and give the give the idea and the opportunity to make it work. And they've done that; they are providing that. It's just fabulous to be working with them because they are they're very very forward, modern thinking people, and they know they know what the public want. They're like us; they know what the public wants to see. And the objective here is to deliver to the public, to the fans, the fights that they want to see. Well, I think it's going to be a phenomenal and iconic crossover event. And like you say, with the popularity, 500 million people are signed up to Netflix. With the popularity of the Furies, the madness around it all, it's just an extraordinary... As you know, we both know Tyson very well, you more than me, And but I've spent a lot of time around him, and I'm glad to see him get the airtime and I think mental health issues as well as fighting, the the, the brilliance of his wife, um, Paris Fury. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, yeah. there, there's so many good things about it. I mean, you know, already I, I, I hear so many people in the public saying they can't believe that this guy in the state he's in, like he has so many mind changes that he's coping with, can go out there and box against the biggest, toughest people on the planet. Final thing, Frank, and this might get your ire, your rival Eddie Hearn last week called you a small hall promoter. Well, let, let's just put it this way. I'm a small hall promoter. I believe in bringing young boxers through in small halls. That's the history of boxing. Yeah, yeah. Your hall's the most famous venue in the world for for, for for young fighters coming through. It's the spiritual home of British boxing. I love promoting now. I love the shows we put on there. You know, Dennis McCann was involved in a brilliant fight on Saturday, which had an unfortunate ending with the uh, with with his cut eye. And but it's our young guys. It came mm. through and we're showing them and they're getting exposure. And they're getting exposure on the biggest platform, TNT. Massive platform. This is not dead zone. This is TNZ where the guys are being seen. And at the end of the day, when you're coming, and I've, you want me to hit back on what Hearn said, our fighters are young fighters. They are what we generally mean as being the next generation. His next generation show on Saturday, which is in a venue that was curtained off and was still half full of the curtained off, off arena, the main event was 30 years of age, and they're calling him the next gen. Now, he's a good fighter, by the way. I'm not knocking the fighter, but come on. Even that stretching it a big fire, the next gen, there's hope for me at my age. If, if 30 is the next generation, then 71 is the new 41. Enjoy the rest of your physio session, Frank. It's always a pleasure to speak to you. Thanks so much for your time today. Cheers, Gareth. All the best, mate. Cheers. That was Frank well, Warren. Back in the studio in a moment with Kane Baker and, of course, big Johnny Fisher. Don't miss it. Welcome back to Fight Club here on Boxing Social. Still with the boys in the studio. Johnny Fisher, of course, heavyweight, young heavyweight, 24 years old. 24? Yes, 24. Gary. 24. And 33-year-old, becoming a bit of a legend with the fans. Yeah. Kane Baker, who gets a lot of love, still cut from the weekend. Still, still cut from the weekend. But looking fucking handsome. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Rock and roll. Do you know what's funny about you? We'll talk about heavyweights in a minute because we've just spoken to Frank Warren. Fascinating stuff. Those pictures of you when you were like in your early 20s, yeah. when you'd worked in the bank, when you'd done a bit of scaffolding, I think, or roofing. Roofing, yeah. You had no tattoos. No. You got in shape. And then, like, there isn't a space on your body anymore. I'm not going to ask you to undress today, but there's not a space on your body anymore. Where did it all start? 
Um, in my friend's bedroom, tattooing, I suppose. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> really? Were you, were you yeah, a mate yeah. with a tattoo artist? With a tattoo artist before he had his shop, and we used to go back after some s parties and some things, and yeah, stay up drawing on me. I was, uh, I was the... <laughs> were you uh, the guinea pig? I was the sketchbook, I suppose, yeah. It's come out really well, though, hasn't it? Yeah, definitely. Um, Are there lots of stories on there? Loads of stories, and to, to a lot of people it might be one big blur, but to me <laughs> I can go back to uh, times and places and see what happened. And, good, yeah. yeah, it's uh, very good. It's, it's more or less my life, life on in a T-shirt. We're going to ask you questions about that. The, the tattooing is one of the questions. We've got questions for, for both of you in the next section. Um, Frank Warren, fascinating there. He believes his guy, Daniel Dubois will do it in Poland. It's a phenomenal heavyweight run. We've just had, obviously, you fought on that card. Uh, we just had uh, Joshua, of course, in the late, late 11th hour replacement in Robert Hellenius. And I think I'm giving him a 7 out of 10. Some people gave him an 8 out of 10. Quick mark from you. Yeah, um, to be honest, I haven't watched the fight. I've saw the knockout. And You've been too busy in Dublin. Yeah, maybe... That's that's what that's all about though. He delivered on what he needed to do, which is deliver that highlight real knockout, which encapsulates all the fans, the casuals, the people talking about Joshua Wilder. So job done. So yeah, I'll give him an eight out of ten. Yeah, I'm I'm with uh, seven, seven, yeah, touching an eight because he did get the knockout finish yeah. at the end, which which uh, cemented it. If it would have been twelve rounds of boxing, maybe would have learnt and rolled out a few new things, but. We, we all wanted that knockout, I think, didn't we? Absolutely. He, he needed it. I, th I just thought he was cautious, not gun-shy. Yeah. I think he needs to go into exchanges. And if he does fight Wilder, I think he's got to push him on the back foot. Yeah. Yes. Because Wilder's not going to shy away. And you, you have to exchange with Wilder. Right? He's You're... patient, Wilder. People forget that about him. He's, and he's, got he's got very patient. As well. People think he's yeah. just a wild swing. We saw that against Bermain Stavert. Yeah. Yes. And you only see a wild swing when he's got someone hurt. But yeah. he has after, to set that up still. He tees it up yeah. a bit, doesn't he? Exactly. Jab, and yeah. Malik's got a great trainer himself, and he's got the tutelage of him for two, three years now. So, yeah, What's the love about Malik Scott? Eh? I like Malik Scott. He's always had time for people as well. I, I didn't know who he, he didn't know who I was when I first met him, and he was friendly to everyone, you know. So, he's, he's I didn't know who you were when I first met you. No, that's what happens. I thought you were just some big rugger you bugger. Sort of, you sort of meet people, and then you find out who they are. So that's how it normally works. <laughs> <laughs> Malik's got less space on his body for tattoos than you have, by the oh, way. Oh yeah, he's got them all over his legs. I, um, he's completely covered. I'm missing. My legs are missing. Leave your legs alone. Don't, I don't like tattoos on legs. I just want to put that out there. There's some for some reason. Have you got any? I got one right here, yeah. right here. Say Bosch. No, it doesn't say <laughs> Bosch. No, it, it, anyway, we'll go into that later. But um, we'll do tattoos in the last section. Um, let's listen to what Don Charles has got to yeah. say about this week and what Daniel Dubois now needs to do in Poland against Alexander Usyk. Two with you, Don. Um, who wins out of uh, Fury? Uh, sorry, who wins, Don, out of Deontay Wilder and Alexander Usyk? I believe that Wilder will ice him, take him out of it. Because by knockout, yeah, hundred percent. He can't. He's not going to outbox Usyk. Who wins out of Fury and Usyk? Like I said earlier on, Tyson Fury will do what we call ragdolling. He will ragdoll him. But you believe they won't meet each other because your guy will beat yeah, Usyk? Yeah, but Usyk can come back after we've taken the belt. He can come back. And, and finally, in the other big heavyweight fight, what's happened between Deontay Wilder and Anthony Joshua? I believe Anthony Joshua knocks him out. Wow. He's the better boxer, more educated in terms of boxing, and he will, he will get the knock. He's also got knockout power. That's why we need to see all these fights. Yes, we do. We do. And these guys have to oblige. The, the, the personnel is concerned, the Wilders, the Joshuas. Come on, guys. Give the fans what, you know... The, this the boxing should be you sh should be fighting each other give it to the fans you're coming home with the belts with daniel next weekend it, it's coming home that's our plan that's our mindset and we've done the work to back up our beliefs does he stop him i believe that's how he's going to end he'll either retire in the corner or he'll get stopped amazing fascinating stuff there. i want to ask both of you before we speak about um 
the other things that he picks. Daniel Dubois, Alexander Usyk this week. It's very exciting to me. Yeah. Can he get the job done over there, Kane? Definitely. I believe he can. He's got the power he, he carries. Uh, he, he can stop at any, any fault at any point, any time. It don't matter how good the opponent is. And uh, it's going to be tough to get to get there and land on Usyk, but I think at some point over 12 rounds he will. And uh, we'll see how it goes from there. I'll, I'll honestly back in probably Dubois for a win, yeah. I've teased you as well Yeah. on Talk Sports in different interviews saying, come on, you dream about beating up Usyk or beating up <laughs> yeah, some of these other... Yeah. You always say, you, you're not ready, of course. You're not ready to be at that level yet, but you just won your first Southern Area title, of yeah. course, um, no, which is very important. Um, if you were Daniel Dubois going into that fight with Usyk, well, if you were you, would you be putting it on him early? Not letting him create those angles that he does so brilliantly and do, give that left backhand... I've got no choice. If yeah. you're thinking about if I'm going into the fight, I've got no choice. And listen, Daniel Dubois is a great fighter. As you said, the power is immense. Sparred him so many times. The, the jab is like a backhand when it hits your face. It feels really? like you're getting hit by right Very hand. powerful. Very, very powerful. So, listen, he's got to use his strengths. It's not it's not rocket science. It's his boxing at the end of the day. And I always make a joke in the gym when I say, are oh, you feeling for your fight? What are you going to do? I said, well, I'm going to try and hit him more times than he hits me. So that's all you've got to do. Daniel Dubois has got a set about him, give him no breathing space and make him move, make him use, he's very good at moving Usyk, but if you're pressuring someone to move and it's not done on their accord, that will drain your energy quicker than if you're doing the movements based on what you want to do. So Don Charles, Dubois, I'll be, I'm hoping they can get the win. Out of a hundred, how do you, how do you see this fight? It's still uh, a, a big favourite to Alexander. 80, 20, 75, yeah, 80, 25? 80, 80, 20. As but, big as that? Yeah, but 20% 20, 20 chance is still a one in five chance, isn't it? I'm still giving him a big chance. A lot of people are giving Dubois 1% chance. The dice man? 70, 30, 70, 30. Early? Has he got to go early? He's got to start yeah. early, but it don't matter Doesn't when mean he lands. Doesn't him out in the no, first no, round. No. It could be the twelfth round. He but him out. Like, like you said, Johnny, um, he's got to dictate where he's moving him and not let you dictate where he's moving. Yeah. Kind of. Is it an advantage <laughs> that Don Charles knows Derek Chisora really well, and what we saw in those first, I'd say, four to six rounds between Derek Chisora yeah. and Alexander Usyk? Yeah, definitely. He definitely. kind of bullied him, didn't he? He was uncomfortable. It looked, I mean, visually, it looked like bullying. Usyk looked uncomfortable, didn't he? He did. He looked uncomfortable. And yeah, you can be, a, he's a, obviously an astounding, exceptional fighter. Would have been one of the best of his generation, if not ever. Mm. But there's a weight categories for a reason. And if an 18, 19 stone man's bullying a 15, 16 stone man and makes it pay, that does pay a huge difference. You two both do it when you go in there. You do it. I, I'm an observer on it. Sometimes when I'm watching, you see um, quizzical looks on people's faces when they're being dominated, but you see the face change. You see the spirit change during a fight. Yes. Yeah. Um, my feeling is Daniel Dubois has to get the job done inside six. That's my feeling because you six so com he's such a lunatic anyway. Yeah. He's got war in his own country. He served on the front lines, and this is just a fight now. It's just a fight, nothing more than that. Is, is there a, 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 a moment here that Daniel Dubois must take and dominate and finish rather than let Usyk into the fight? Well, from, from earlier, he's got to be on him, and like you said, he's got to... That that face or that feeling. Because you've been be through like, it. Yeah, yeah. You've been through those fights when you're under pressure and you know you can come out the other side. Yes, yeah, definitely. And he's got to squeeze the pressure early. Um, and that's to stop the smiling of Usyk and the moving and, and, and just land the bomb. So if he sees a chance where he is uncomfortable, he's got to capitalise yeah, on it. He's yeah. not going to think, oh, I'm going to get him later down the line. If you see a chance, you've got to, you've got to think, right, it's now or never. But he has got to do everything to make it. It's going to be the hardest tempo to, to lift him, to, to go from the off. But he has got to squeeze him so Usyk is in half a round one. 
he's good at hypnotising you, so he could try and lull Dubois into like a not fighting at the pace he wants, like fighting at Usyk's yes, pace. Yes. So he's got to not get caught in a trap of thinking, oh, I'm doing yeah. enough, but yeah. he's not because you see, no, he's not. got to really yeah. squeeze. Yeah, it's weird because Usyk reminds me of Fury mentally in lots of yeah. ways. Like he's got that. I think you guys have got it as well, um, and. It's something you have to take into sport, which is, I embrace oblivion today. I will die today if I have to. And uh, th that's the way I played rugby. Yeah. I'm a little guy. Uh, I was up against big guys like you, hit me hard late. Yeah. And you know you're gonna get it. Yeah, you you pass the ball as a scrum off. They're go gonna hit you here late. It's gonna hurt, they'll break your ribs, but you get up, you carry on. That's it. You, Some, you, sometimes you, you reach in for it to happen. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Come on, do it. Exactly. You, 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 yeah. you limp the day afterwards, yeah. don't you? Do you, you know? get it, Cameron? You're like, you'll be, just before you go to the venue, you're in your hotel room, you sit on your own for a couple of hours, you just think, I'll just think and sit there and like, this is it. This is what it's all come down That's to. That's why I love you guys, yeah. because embracing I don't mean death, but but there's there it is all, an embracing of death, it, isn't there? It can all go know? wrong. The, the disaster, like yeah. it could go wrong. Com yeah. When you commit totally, it, I point, think it's in the DNA. Yeah, yeah. at some point you, you you think of the worst that can happen. Yeah, and you think to yourself, yeah, but I'm ready for the yeah. worst to happen. Everyone else worries, worries about yeah, you, yeah. Spark out on yeah. but everyone else worries about you, but you aren't worried. You've got to fortify no. your brain. And be exactly, like, I'm ready for the worst. So That's why you're beautiful and unique. It's why we love you. Don Charles's um, picks, fascinating. Right. Wilder and Usyk, and I agree with him. Wilder ices Usyk. What do you think? I, I agree. I can see that. I, I can yeah, see that right. happening. I really can. It, because we've, we've it's like, um, AJ's a, a boxer. Wilder's very unorthodox. Like, it just, and uh, the control, Usyk can control a good boxer. But for someone that unorthodox, I don't think he can control him with the power he's got. I think he catches him with an unorthodox shot and it's lights out. It might even be 11th round. Big JF? I can see it. I can see Wilder icing him, but I can yeah. equally see Usyk just not getting hit once. And frustrating yeah. Wilder. It's a both. great matchup, sorry though, isn't it? on the fence, but I can see both outcomes. You know? Splinter's in your backside. Yes. Um, <laughs> Johnny, to you, um, he thinks that Anthony Joshua knocks out Deontay Wilder. That's an interesting take. Um, I'd, I'd, hope, I'd love to see Anthony Joshua do it because, as I said before, if Anthony Joshua is doing well, it galvanises the whole country. I remember back in three, four years ago when he was flying, everyone was, was boxing. It was like boxing fever, wasn't it? Everyone was behind him. So I'm hoping he can do it, but I'd probably say Wilder's the favourite going into that fight. I, I, I think it's weird how stars make fights and so mm. I really believe AJ might have to be in a Wilder. That'd be great if he could. I'm not convinced. No. Because I think he needs to commit. Yeah. Uh, not overcommit. Yeah. Educated Falling, pressure. Yeah. But I so want him to do it, but he needs to You're believe. Same to needs to believe. Yeah. You know, it's a difficult one to pick. Yeah. I've gone for Wilder inside seven. Yeah, um, I see that. But yeah. we got to see them, haven't we? That's, that's the point. Hopefully this year. Fury against Francis, Tyson Fury against Francis Ngannou. I talked to Frank earlier about the enormity of this at home with the Furies. Have you watched any yeah, of it? Yeah, I've watched it. It's really good. Oh, I haven't. We just, I'm just finishing so at the minute. It's the next one. Are you and Carol going to sit down and watch yeah, it? Yeah, we're going to definitely watch it. I can't wait to tune in. You've seen it. I've seen Mama the whole Dad series. Have Mama you seen Dad it? Hetter, yeah, we've been watching it. Really, really good. I like the beginning bit when a man comes up to him and says, still think Joshua would beat you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the cheek of it, you know? The cheek of it. But he takes it like he, he takes a bit of crap from his kids. What does he say back to him? He said, I reckon any man on this beach could beat you. He says back to the man. <laughs> I took it well, you know? Yeah. He's a funny character. Oh, the, the, I think the interesting thing to come out of the series is people realising that it's not a joke and it's not a it's not a fake it's not a parody yeah, that he's got bipolar yeah he's he's just, he's just he's a great character i remember sparring with him up in before the wilder free fight it's just a just a normal bloke he he drives to the gym in a lamborghini or ferrari but he's just a normal bloke still then right? he empties the bins yeah, he's, <laughs> fair play you know he's, well, as paris like, says to him in the series tyson it wouldn't matter if you had 10 quid or 10 million yeah. quid you're still going to be the same exactly it's great it's a great way to be. how amazing is she though yeah she's brilliant yeah 
She is brilliant. She you can tell there's a genuine support and love for her, for her husband, which is great to see. I'm really pleased for the traveller community yeah. that because Tyson doesn't put himself out there politically. No. I've always pushed him to do that, but that they, they they are um, a great advert for travellers who are really hard working people. But he's a world champion as well. Of, everyone so he like sort of transcends he's not just yeah. a champion yeah. it's yeah. great that he yeah. represents yeah. him but he transcends all that boundaries and that's what a great champion does they don't just resonate with one group they yeah. the whole country or the whole world you know? everyone in the country yeah. can relate to exactly. him in some, whether it be mental health his drink he's white he's been a yeah. traveler there's he can relate with pretty much well everyone. you know that story as well and uh, i i fought on his undercard on the cut his comeback Mm. And how he was. Which one? Safa was yeah, it? Yeah, Sefa yeah, yeah. And how he was with the kids, like, wait, where the security was trying to get him through, and the time he had in every single kid he waited for to. Yeah. And he was told the security, like, they're the ones that ma that, that we do it for, like, yeah. and the security were pretty annoyed trying to ch trying to hurry him up, and he didn't, he waited for every kid and signed and had photos, and he's a top guy. Yeah. Top guy. Imagine. You get the opportunity to fight an MMA fighter, yeah, yeah. I.e. Francis Ngannou, in the Middle East where the big fights are now coming. The next five years, I think it's the new Vegas, as Frank mentioned. Yeah. And I agree with him. Yeah, I do as well. They want to commit to the sport. They want to transform their society. They want to bring young people into the fold. They want to entertain. They want to open up their society to show the world where they are, mm. that they're modern that they want to entertain. Surely you wouldn't have said no to fighting an MMA fighter. Tyson Fury, in the interim, wants to fight for the undisputed title, but fights Francis Ngannou in the interim. They're, they're all pretty much tied up so it couldn't happen. And yeah, I... Uh, it bring it brings uh, something different, and I think it's going to be iconic. Busy. Yeah, I, yeah. When we look back on it, yes, I it think it will be, be one of those moments. Until we look back, on exactly. It. And everyone, moan, there's a lot of people moaning about it, but I guarantee you, they're all going to be watching or to keep in touch. Yeah, pressing the red button yeah. when it comes yeah. to it. Yeah, yeah. that's it. And who's like, who are we to begrudge? Not only Tyson Fury to earn a, a massive payday, but Francis and Ganu, yeah. who's come from the humble beginnings he has in the salt mines of, where was it? Where was he? It was um, it Cameroon. Okay, it was Cameroon. Yeah, it was. Cameroon. As an 11 year old, That's digging great. out salt from the and mine. now he's fighting for the world heavyweight. You should be digging out some salt mines or maybe some, you should be down the, I'd be, I'd, be, I'd be useful down there. I think. We just exactly. took out some salt from the KFC. But yeah, I've been eating the <laughs> sodium chloride. From Digging the, out the training ground yeah, at West Ham. It. No, I've been doing... <laughs> my one's selling meat on the back of a van, so I can stick with that. Digging out the cheese. Yeah, the cheese and the meat. And, yeah, I don't want to think about cheese and meat anymore. I've done enough of that, of that stuff. That's in the past. But I think we... we I, I, I'd rather celebrate what's going on over there on October the 28th. Definitely. The opening of Riyadh season, music, sport, entertainment. Yeah. Boxing is being boxing. Francis Ngannou, Tyson Fury is being placed at the top of it. The opening ceremony, if you like, yeah. of like an Olympic Games yeah. by their, their Minister of Entertainment. It's going to be... It's, going it's to be, our sport. It's a spectacle. Yeah. It's going to be a spectacle. That's what you would call it, I think. It's something that's never really been seen before. I know we've seen the crossover of Mayweather and McGregor, but yeah. two heavyweights, the arguably the hardest punching one ever to have lived and the greatest boxer at the minute and heavyweight at the minute. Fury, it's a great spectacle. What happens in that fight for you, Kane? Uh, it's, it's, again, Fury being... You can't out, get hit, can Fury, he? Fury being how he is... <laughs> Is it, it's how does he play? Does it? Does he actually say it? Well, because at some point he stands in there and trades as yeah. well, and he, you know he's got magical feet and movement, so he could go there and maybe box his head off for twelve rounds. Yeah. But is that Fury? There's a there's a little bit of a naughty kid in Fury that might yeah. just stand there and swing it out with him. Well, it's a bit like Mayweather. Let I, I, I say let. He sat back for four rounds. I remember yes, watching it. Yes. I mean, obviously, I did a lot of work on it. I wrote in the program. It was one of the most amazing yeah. times of uh, and events I've ever covered with um, Dana White crossing paths with boxing people and yeah. kind of standing there with his arm around Mayweather, which you'd never have expected. And, and everyone hammers each other, bosh. bosh. But when they get together, <laughs> we've got to go a few boshes in bosh. today. You've made the effort. Um, 
But when people come together in fight sports, yeah. they actually get on, they all of yeah. them. I can't believe Eddie Hearn and Frank Warren have never met, but they would get on because they've got so much in common. When this happens, come on, will Francis Ngannou gas after four or five? Or could we face a catastrophic big punch knockout from Francis Ngannou and then they have to rematch? I think if Fury turns up and he switched, like just normally switched on, like he should be for any fight, I think he can box him if he wants or he can beat him up if he wants. That's what I think. I think he beats him quite easily. I, I do as well. I think he beats him quite. And it's mad what you said because they do five minute rounds, but they seem to gas a little boxing. But they can go to the ground, can't yeah. they? Yes. That's and what they all the say rest, when they come to it? boxing is that, well, you call it a rest, but have you ever wrestled? Yeah, yeah I was going to say. <laughs> I used to do taxing. judo. Yeah, like, it, it, it's so exhausting, but, but, but it's a different, it's different fitness. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, When you've got to bounce yeah. up and down on your feet and yeah. be switched on, and yeah. you've got the expectation not of someone grappling you, but someone going to potentially knock you out. It's a yeah. different mental stress as well. Yeah. Apparently, Sam Jones says... When Joe Joyce... I was about to say this. And what, yeah, go on. And Gano sparred Joe Joyce. Yeah. And, yeah. It's a, they went at it. Yeah, they went at it. But Hammer and tongs. Joe Joyce got the upper hand, like, in quite pedestrian fashion, I would say. Yeah, like, but Nagano doesn't hold back. No, and out of all the heavyweights, like, maybe Joyce would give Fury some good work. He would. Yeah, yeah. He would. So and that he can definitely like, whack. Because yeah. Joe Joyce, we know, he's got a granite chin. We saw yeah. that in his last fight with Zhang. Um... And Ganu could definitely whack. So Fury has got to be on his game because if he isn't, and this is a sort of thing where you could take your eye off the ball with a banana skin like this, thinking, oh, he's just an MMA fighter. Yeah. If he hits you on the chin, you're going to know about it. British fans going to travel out to Fury and Ganu? Are you going out? Oh, no. If you had an invite, would you go? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Mike Tyson's going to be there. What do we make of Mike Tyson training Francis and Ganu? I love it. Oh, is that? I didn't know that. That's oh, brilliant. yeah. That's brilliant. Yeah. What do we make of that? Oh, it's a good man. If you're looking for a knockout, which is what he's, <laughs> yeah. he's not going to outbox him. We talk about Dubois not outboxing Usyk. It's even more the case for Ngannou yeah, with definitely. Fury. So, what better man as a knockout specialist than Tyson, Mike Tyson? If we start like, seeing those shuffling feet yeah, from yeah, Ngannou. Yeah, the little rock. Who knows? Oh. Like, we don't really know how good Ngannou is at boxing because we no, never had to see him have a no. professional fight. So, it'll be interesting to see how he does against the best in the in the division. Mike Tyson, you both love? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's iconic. Shadow, I yeah. think he's incredible. The it's zen iconic. of Mike Tyson, the change yeah, in him. Yeah. The weird thing about Mike Tyson is everybody loves Iron Mike Tyson, but he doesn't like that version no. of himself anymore. Yeah, no. It appears sometimes. It's, it's like gone. the devil in us. Yeah. It's like the, the, the dark side of us, <laughs> isn't it? I've you seen know? him talk about how it's gone, like that savage mentality he had and he said I can never get that back now like it, it's gone you know the iron mic it might come up every now and then but he said then I seen an interview he said then days are gone and it, yeah. he was breaking down into tears talking about it fascinating stuff yes we got your questions next for the boys in the studio Bush. Bush. Welcome back to Fight Club here on Boxing Social. Well, finally, Johnny Fisher, of course, and Kane Baker here in the studio with me. Some questions for the guys. A lot of questions, Kane, about your life. Um, what's your best moment in boxing so far? My best moment in boxing so far. Walking out in Birmingham Saturday night was... Um, was something you know to uh first time there first time on a big show in Birmingham, yeah. I mean, yeah and to have a i had a good few hundred fans there family there a family there um something that i'd never done so that was a yeah. massive a massive moment for me really to take and boxing hasn't been in birmingham for a good few like matchroom hadn't been there for a decade yeah, long, yeah. a hell of a long time mm. so that was that was up there to be honest yeah last week uh, last weekend Johnny, where's yours? I think the first time I walked out in front of a crowd, 
at the O2 because I had three fights behind closed doors, one, two in the cl closed doors and one at fight camp. And then I remember being in the changing room and Eddie kept walking in and out saying, they're going mental for you out there, John. And I thought, oh, he's just bigging me up. The Romford to Army. <laughs> yeah, because I sold about 1,500 tickets, 1,500 to 2,000. And I thought, uh, that would be a little section of the O2. And I got in there and the whole bowl was full of uh, my supporters and it did stiffen my legs up a bit in the ring. I was like, oh, bloody hell, I never... Because you're new to it all. That was probably the best moment. Right? And, they, and they're the 1,500 that you sold, but they, had, they then multiply with... Other people, people, that, yeah, man, that's what I mean. It's just, it, it's just crazy, and yeah, that's a great thing. That's like why it was good to fight on Joshua's card because I was only given five hundred tickets for that because obviously it sold out itself. But all them people in there, if ten percent of them become supporters of me as well, it's great. What's that feeling like though when you leave after whether you won or lost? When you leave, and people on the way out, or people at the after party saying, "I love you, I respect you so much." It's um, new fans. Yeah, it's it's oh, overwhelming. It's, it really is overwhelming. And even to pe so if you go out with a, you end up going down to your own section of small people, and go somewhere, and then someone f recognizes you, and they even that's overwhelming. Yeah. Wow, you had a great fight, and yeah, the yeah. the it's, 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 it's a privilege, it's a isn't it? yeah. It's yeah. a privilege that people people are paying their money to come and watch, yeah. stay in hotels and stuff like that, and Pl they plan their weekend to come and watch you do something that you love. And it's, like, it's a great and feeling when, hard, you, it? when you deliver a good fight for yeah. them. You know, like for me, I've had some fights where I've knocked people over in the first round, second round because I've got the power, so I'm going to do it. But the last fight I had, Harry Armstrong, seven rounds gave people a little bit to show a little bit more and you feel like yeah they've got their money's worth there you know and it's, it's, that's always a good feeling as well not just for yourself but, but then you and then you still bashed him in the seventh but, which was uh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> still going out of there um kane navid zf said um question for the champ oh. kane baker boxing bro how did you become a pro boxer uh from white collar boxing to pro what advice would you give me or anyone like me um so any advice from going from amateur white color and i suppose it's down to working hard and you that's that's the advice i'd give is keep working hard and keep trying to better yourself in every way for me i went from doing the white collar and i went to a total combat tournament with and got mended up i remember that license. was that bt sport yeah yeah in yeah. that tiny i mean it, it was the size of the studio wasn't yeah, it yeah you could, there was no hiding place no hiding <laughs> place and i got my my license that, that way kind of uh and the board they don't do it anymore but they come out and watch me spar and i, I, I went mine kind of went that way uh but yeah again from where i was to where i am now is just being consistent and hard work and that's the advice i'd give to anyone was there a moment work you hard. knew that you should turn pro was there a moment no i did used to like get out of the shower and stand in the mirror and be like and announce myself and, <laughs> and that kind of thing in and, the buffer and, voice yeah yeah, 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 yeah. ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen definitely in the buffer Kane voice <laughs> baker um <laughs> and yeah, I used to do that years ago, and my missus used to say to me, "You're mad." I was like, one, "One, yeah." yeah. I say, like, "One day I'm going to be a pro," um, and I never thought it would actually come, but it did come, and it was through persistence and hard work. When was your moment then? When you knew? When I sparred Dave Allen the first time, when I was first year or second year at uni, I think I was eighteen, nineteen, and I didn't work who was he fighting? Lucas Brown, two weeks before he yeah. fought Lucas Brown. Yeah. So that great was that body knockout. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But body Dave shopping. Allen is like one of my heroes when I was growing up being a boxing fan, like entertainment, just tough going there. Papi de la Hoya. Papa de la yeah, Papi yeah. de la pay per view as well. Papi de la pay per view. <laughs> He's an amazing six character. Six rounds and he belted me around for six rounds, but I was tough and Darren Barker would tell you as well, like I, I took it and I kept coming forward and, and kept you fighting knew. Back. Then I got out of there and I thought I've been belted a bit there but then i knew in my head i've got what it takes to be a professional boxer if i want to dedicate my life to it and yeah. from then I, I knew him you know like you there was no it's doubt in my mind i've got what it takes there's a feeling sometimes when you when you do have a bad day in the office or you 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 go up a few levels and you spar so i've sparred some great fires and you get out and you think wow 
I thought, am I good enough to be doing this? And you question yourself. But then a couple of hours later, you think you go back to working hard and you think, I'm going to be better. The next yeah. time I spy, I'm going to be better. You. It motivates you and yeah. lifts you up to the next level. Kane, Kane, this is from Jimmy Taylor One. Um, what's your favourite fight of your career so far? It's hard. It's very, very hard. Um... I did have a good a good fight with Sam Maxwell. Oh yeah, I love Sam. Yeah, um, and that that was that was because it was on the Fury comeback, and mm. there was a, there was a lot. So that was a massive. But fighting Conor Bennett York Hall was was up there. Um, and then how Bernie, good is Bo- he, Conor Ben? Yeah, uh, I think he's a man. is he world level? Yeah, definitely. I know. Think I thought he win a world title. Fo- I think a hundred percent he wins a world title. Mm. Um, he's got that. That chip on his shoulder, where he could be, fr- he he could get to a certain place from his name and from his from being, but he he's not happy with that. He wants to he wants to do it. All. Bo- the, boxing's one sport where having a dad won't get you anywhere. Yeah, you no, get found no. out. So yeah, you he's get here fun. because of his own merit as well. Yeah, definitely, and he wants to do more on his own merit. So I, I believe he can, he can 100% go all the way. Obviously, we talked earlier about your weight loss. Um, and it is about exercise and diet. Yes. Well, 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 regardless of what anyone ever says, um, we'll talk to you about that in a minute as well. Oh, um, <laughs> um, what advice, Kane, do you have? This is Jay Rin Belfast. Um, so many questions for both of you today. Um, what advice do you have for achieving and maintaining weight loss, given your own inspirational transformation? Um, also, following your cracking display at the weekend, will we get to see you two run it back anytime soon? Trilogy on the cards with Flynn, isn't there? Yeah, 100%. I'm ready to go to today, to be honest. Uh, yeah, so hopefully we get some news followed up on that and the, the trilogy comes out. With the weight loss... Um, Really, is pretty. You got to move more than you eat. <laughs> At one point, I I ate more than I moved, and that's why I we got all bigger. have those days, though. I've yes, we all have and those the, days. And them, them days, you've had him. You're having one today. <laughs> you're <laughs> having a month of doing that. Yeah, exactly. But, yeah. but them da- and it, about them days, you've only got to let them bad days once. Just have once, and then a bad. And allow week, yourself, good week. though. Yeah, allow yeah. yourself and don't feel good. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Is it a lifestyle then? Yeah, yeah. lifestyle. You 100%. don't drink. I you don't, don't drink smoke. At all, no. And listen, I have a laugh and a joke. I love. You a have take a drink, away. don't you? Love a take yeah, one hundred percent. I love a takeaway. Too much many. To the next person, but as you said before, it's your lifestyle. We're talking out there, me and Kane. Like after two weeks of doing nothing and chilling out, you love going to the gym. You just, oh yeah. It's no. part. It's that's what I'm addicted to. You going and training. It's like a a mental release, and it's become part of. Who, it comes to who you are, doesn't it? One hundred percent. He trains at seventy six, seventy seven now, and he trains every day still. It's just because. And part if of there was life. one thing he wouldn't want took away from him, it don't matter about anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He wouldn't want that training took away from him, no. and that's how much of a lifestyle it becomes. Yeah, that's it. And and you know to to get better in the field that you are. Then the food comes in. Yeah. There's certain things in your life, start everything. Food is you, the fuel. Yeah. The, you've got to view it as that. You wouldn't put rubbish petrol but, in your car. Would but you? while we were having these two weeks, bad two weeks off me and Jolly, oh, we'll, yeah. we'll have a few uh, <laughs> cheeky that. ones. Yeah. Yeah. He won't, though. What? You won't have a cheeky one, will you? I've had a cheeky chicken burger. No, no but you won't drink. <laughs> no, it's one of those drink. things that That's I think one of the things that just never entered my head to want to do it. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, Johnny, um, this is from Donnell Dino. Donnell Dino. Yeah. Would, would you know him? I was going to say, you said it then. I thought you knew him. Um, <laughs> would, would Johnny realistically fight Solomon Dacus for the English title this year or next year? Is that a fight that could happen? Solomon's managed by my, my people as well, SJAM, SJAM Boxing. and Sam Sol- Jones, yeah. Yes, uh, not Sam Jones anymore, it's Adam Morley now. Sam Jones, they split a couple yeah. about a year. But he created know. it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, Solomon's in that position where he's challenging for a British title now. He's looking at the Clarks, the Adelaide's, the Wardleys. So I'm happy for all them guys to do their thing. And I'm happy to keep building in that in that background behind them guys. And I've picked up my first title, Southern Area title against Harry Armstrong. My next plan would be, I really want to go abroad and fight in Vegas or New York, because we spoke about that for such a long time. And um, eventually all these guys, get, I'll get to that level, I've, I'm going to fight them all, but I'll do it on my terms when I'm ready as well, and when I want to do it. Um, I, the, the, this is Frank, Frank Hanratty. I don't want to um, ask the question because it's about ordering the Chinese. Who's better at it, you or your dad? My dad's got it 
Ingrained yeah, into it. his memory. Yeah. He's done it yeah. too well, so. <laughs> but, uh, um, Epi Ward, final question here. Epi Ward um, says, what a life, brother, to Kane. Um, when are we having Kane over for a Chinese Johnny Fisher? That'd be great. Uh, if you love yeah. the Chinese, love what's the your Chinese. favourite dish from the Chinese? If you had to order one dish. Or one dish. For the rest of your life, it's the only one you can order from the Chinese. I know what mine is. It's a half special charming. Charming. It's got a bit of everything in it. I don't want to see. I want to do something a bit like that now, nah, but <laughs> I'm more of a like a curry or something in black bean sauce. Yeah, lovely. Yeah, that's lovely. Beef beef yeah. I go for a beef Szechuan in, beef in black bean sauce. Yeah, you like Szechuan, do you? I, I like a or Szechuan, Anna, which is very Anna spicy. Like Szechuan's all very spicy. Yeah. Yeah. Southern Chinese. It's amazing. Food. There's so many like different. Very spicy. Well. You'd love that Szechuan. Szechuan. Yeah. There's all different yeah. different cuisines. Like when the takeaway, it's just like all morphs into one. But it'd be great to go around China and see all the different cuisines and stuff. Gareth would be a great tour guide for that. Love China. Yeah. yeah. You've been there. You studied there for a bit. Didn't you? Lived, there lived there for a, a year. Well, yeah. Lived there for a year. Yeah. Did martial arts. Did a bit of studying. What's learned some Chinese. What's that martial art you done? Wushu. Wushu. With a kun. With a kun. Unfortunately, I was flying it around in your house and I hit a few light bulbs and all sorts. <laughs> Against the same big John what, was, well. what was that all about <laughs> that know, day? Still keep getting that Everyone clip. says that was the best episode we've ever done. With well, hopefully. Yeah. It was great fun. It, it was, was lovely to meet your family. Yeah. Uh, you got a big bash there on Friday, haven't you? Yes, we have. Is that celebrating your victory? Or? Yeah, just having a little get-together. There's always a nice excuse to have a few people around, you know, so it's going to be an interesting night. No doubt Big John will be on the beers, so <laughs> it's going to be a messy one for sure. It's been an absolute pleasure having you both in the studio today. You're phenomenal characters. You are emblematic of what our sport is all about. Kane Baker, thank you so much. Thank you for the inspiration you give so many people and what you're doing. Thank you very much for having me on. It's been a, it's been a great day. A yes. great day. Johnny, you know what you've got to do? Bosh. Just be yourself, Bosch. Well, thank Bosh. you very much. Great to be with you, Gareth, and also Kane, who's, who's a proper legend of the sport, a, living, uh, a, a modern legend of the game. So it's great to be here. Great to have the guys in the studio. Thanks so much for them today. And also for Frank Warren and Don Charles. You've been watching Fight Club with me, Gareth Davis, on Boxing Social. We'll see you next time.